bullet chests, mouse slips, lost on time, disconnects. They can all go one player's direction. And we are off. Magnus opens up with a London system. Jan responding with the copycat with Bishop 5. Knight of 3. So let's see. Queen b6 here by Jan hitting the pawn on b2, which is always a little bit awkward to defend. Right, because if the queen b3, black throws the pawn up to c4. And so Magnus, he says, I'm going to defend by attacking something else. And now his queen can slide to that diagonal that goes to b1. The engine didn't like it, but queen b1, Magnus, he chose to put it on that square. Yeah, g6 and bishop g7 by Jan. So that whenever this knight moves, there will be the move bishop to f5. Bishop b2 by Magnus. Perhaps it was something better for Jan, but he still has a very comfortable position here out of the opening against the London. Can't complain if you have this on the black side. And now the bishop can and does slide out to the f5. The queen is under threat, but that's why the bishop steps in between. So trades seem to help white's cause, but b2 is loose here. Can you capture it? You can take, but white is banking on the move rook fb1. If the queen moves, you can take the pawn on b7. So let's see if Jan is going to take. He can also, of course, continue to improve his position with a move like rook ac8. Rook A to C8, always a natural move. A4, expansion on the queen side. And A6, that was a move that cost Jan in the World Championship match. Remember, it, it, the exact structure like this, this was a problem for him. Yeah, so now the idea is that in case you take the pawn on A5, white wants to go pawn, take C5, and if you recapture the queen, there would have been B4. Magnus now steps his knight in the center with knight E5, and I think slowly but surely, Magnus is gaining the upper hand here as his pieces are slightly more active. That queen on a7, it's offside. It's not really helping out in the, the position. And black shuts it down with c4. So we're going to have a closed game here of maneuvering chess. But this should be good for white, who controls an important pawn break. b3 and e4. Both of them, it's up to white. Exactly. And bishop g5, such an unpleasant move. And now he breaks in the center with the move e4. Jan has to take on e5, but it looks so unpleasant. White's going to recapture your knights under attack. Oh, he takes on f5 right away. He just wants to open up the black king, and he's going to bring his knight to f3. This looks like a French defense with that backwards e6 pawn. Now, this looks terrible. You cannot take an f5. He goes b5, but this might give him even more weaknesses. Magnus goes knight f3, but look at this, Robert. He's up a pawn, and the d5 pawn is so weak. Jan missed the rook on c8 was loose, so he couldn't recapture on e5. Now, suddenly, black trying to draw up some counterplay. Over there, the a5 pawn is gone. The c3 pawn may be next, but is the black king going to survive? I don't know, Robert. It looks tough if, the, if this knight ever lands on a 5 or... There goes the D-pawn. Oh, and there goes the rook. That, that's one game. Yes, he gets the rook with check. He takes the other rook. Nice tactical awareness from Magnus Carlsen. And I don't think Jan Apology has the draw here. It looks like rook D8 would win. He resigns. Magnus is now up by 6. Jan can come back with the white piece. He plays the Vienna game. All right, Magnus goes for his quick 95 move going after the bishop. But uh, yeah, that was a very smooth victory for Magnus. And I like that Jan, he is mixing it up with queen on h5. He's saying the e5 pawn, but knight to b4. The queen on d1 does an important job. Now black gets quick development. I like stealing material and bullets. So Benjamin, I think from Jan's perspective, it's a successful opening. Right, yeah, he's up a pawn here, but Magnus has very easy peace play. His bishop drops back to f8, and his bishop on b7 is so active, always putting pressure on the white king on g1. Rook e8, I love that move. He just wants to go rook a8, maybe rook g6. Robert, I think in bullet, this is really a dream position for black. Like, all of your moves come so natural. Yeah, suddenly it's really difficult, and he blundered the h3 pawn. f3, queen takes h3. Thank you very much for the attack and the material. And you could see the frustration on Jan Lepomachy's face. He can't believe what's happening here, but nobody can believe the level of chess that Magnus Carlsen tends to show. Now, he's playing so well and so quickly. Look at the clock, Robert. He's up to 58 seconds. It's, it's incredible that he's just playing all these moves instantly, and yeah, that's just his, his instinct is on another level. And f5 kicks the knight out of there, opening up that bishop on b7 once more. The knight goes to g5, but I feel like black just brings the knight back to d5. f4 threatens to win the piece. Oof, this is terrible for white. Exactly, everything is so super loose. He goes knight h3, but there's got to be some... Oh, look at this, rook takes oh. g3 f4, hitting the bishop and the rook. That is a sick find. He just gives up an exchange to win a pinned knight. The knight on h3, sorry, the pawn on g2 is pinned to the king. That is so nasty. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do here with why. Jan is going to lose another game, and he's going to go down seven points. I mean, just unbelievable. When Magnus plays like this, there's nobody who can stop him. And we mean nobody. He is now going to be up a minor piece. Jan has to throw in the towel. Seven-point lead for Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, to be fair, there is still that guy, Hikaru Nakamura, who, you know, is very much 
on par with him with Bullet, but you know, Magnus is playing out of his mind right now, playing super quickly, finding all of these tactics in just a blink of an eye. And look at this position. There's a Black Knight out into White's camp on B4. It's kind of trapped, but it's hard to attack because C5, there it goes. You defend it. If en passant, the Knight takes back. By the Knight is now safe, but the D6 pawn is weak, which is why Magnus goes Bishop to F4. Jan has to go either, I was going to say either E5 or D5, but he goes Knight E8. That looks a little bit passive. And White goes E5. If you take on E5, the Queens would be traded and White would take back on E5. So this looks like kind of a sort of French defense with the Bishop down there on C8. What do you make of this position where Black just stole upon the center and Magnus once again, he's surprised and can't believe that he's blundering things. I like this position before, but now uh, Jan is up a pawn. I don't like what he did though, trading voluntarily and going bishop b5. He loses a lot of time. I think he should have just gone like bishop d7. But now his queen is under attack. This rook can swing all the way over to h4. And this looks super unpleasant, Robert. And h6, he's going alpha zero style. That queen has to go to h8 for... Oh! Oh my gosh, the king is just getting mated. The knight d5, rook 97. This is so miserable. This is tough. I mean, where do you even go with the queen? If you take on b2, maybe a rook b4. The queen has to leave the diagonal. And when you do, there's going to be queen d4. And white has to be winning there. This looks tough. This looks tough. Yeah, there's going to be a rook take on e8, knight f6, check. Everything is hanging there. So he goes knight d6 at long last. is even material. And white's king is much, much safer. And look at this rook before the rook is coming up to b6. This pawn on b7 is super weak. Magnus can now just take it. He's going to take on b7, take on a6. And then all of a sudden, he will have three connected passers on the queen side. And look at this. Jan just tries to bring his rook to the center. But he's down three pawns on the queen side, as you mentioned. Bishop c4, another really precise move. Trading off the bishops. There is no hope here for black. You know, his king side is also getting ripped apart. Magnus can just trade here. Push the pawn off the board, rook b8 now, and yeah, this is going to be another good win. This is easy. There's no threats from black. The rook on f8 can be traded off the board. I don't even know what to recommend. Yep, resigning. That, that's the thing I would recommend here. It looks over. He's yeah. listening. He's listening. <laughs> he heard, and Yanda Pomnishi, you know, he, if he had any hopes to win this match in the bullet, those hopes are dashed because Magnus Carlsen is just too darn good. Yeah, Magnus playing the Philidor defense here. Jan going for a Italian setup. Eventually does go d4. And uh, let's see what Magnus is going to do here. Maybe knight e5, knight b6. But Magnus playing out of his mind. Finding all of these moves super quickly. And it's tough. It's tough if you're Jan. Like, Magnus' instincts are just on another level. And this type of setup, Danya was talking about the other day, from the black side, it's very difficult to prove an advantage for white. Those d6 pawn, it looks like a target, but black has the perfect cocoon to keep it safe and sound. Exactly. Yeah, the pawn of d6 sometimes is a little bit weak, but for the moment, that's not an e5, is blocking the diagonal of the bishop. The problem for black can be, though, is that you're a little bit cramped for space, so I guess Magna is going to go bishop d7, rook 88, and bishop c8 to at least have this rook defending the d6 pawn. Yeah, black does have everything together, and look at this queen before move. The f4 pawn, the e4 pawn, both feel a little bit loose. And speaking of loose, g3, that looks loosey goosey in front of the white king, and black decides to strike, but maybe Jan has had this worked out. Yeah, I think Magnus rushed here a little bit with the moves d5 and knight e4. It feels like this should backfire, as the pawn on e4 is so weak, and Jan should be able to pick it up sooner or later for the moment. He has to move his queen, though, but this pawn is going to be a goner. Ooh, f5 is trying to... Make it spicy, and the Eva bar says that Jan made a mistake here. The king is just so open on h1. Right, now there's bishop d3 for Magnus to block the default and attack the knight on g6. Magnus had to move bishop takes h3, taking the queen when he was still defending the, the rook on uh, e4. And now it looks like Jan has a slight edge here in the endgame. Nice move, though. Rook d6, hitting the bishop and putting the rook on defended square. So d takes c3 will be next. And... If this is better for white, it's going to be very difficult to prove. But the white king is closer to the middle, and black has to start defending those pawns. Yeah, g4, nice move here by Jan. Okay, we we'll see a trade. Now Jan has to step up his king, but I think it's going to be difficult to do, because whenever your king steps up, Magnus will have a lot of checks. Also, these pawns over here are quite loose, so you're going to have to be very careful here if you're white. Yeah, bishop e7, a nice move, giving up c3 for h4. Now bishop d6 check. If the king has to go to h3, it's very far away from where it needs to be, which is d3 to win that c pawn. So bishop, ooh, bishop f6. Wait a second. Uh -huh. 
So he was offering the trade of bishops with Jan instead it goes after the a5 pawn. Also looks good. What does black do here? If you take an a5, which was a little bit off though, but, but what does black do? I don't know. This actually looks quite decent for white. You're stealing a pawn, then your b pawn is free. So he runs with his king. Ah, oh, the king is trapped for white. Imagine if that black king gets all the way into oh. the position. He's threatening mate now, and you have to go g5, but then black is a perpetual. Check and check. What a funny perpetual. Yeah, this is a draw. A oh, is he going to do the... He's going to milk the clock a little bit, and, well, just for a second, and there we have the draw. And still over 19 minutes remain in the match. Jan Napomji earns his first half point in bullet, and with an eight-point lead for Magnus, Jan has to win all the rest of the games at this stage. Yeah, no, it might almost be mathematically over. Ja, uh, Magnus has a has a hefty, hefty lead and not that much time left. So let's see how Jan will try to fight back, but it's looking tough. It is, and this position is also looking nice for white. You see black throw pawns forward with g5. Black probably has to castle queen side, but the pawn structure is favorable for white because of those double pawns. Yeah, but at least Jan has a double-edged game. He goes f4, trying to break open the king side. But Magnus keeps it close and strikes in the center with the move e4. Now, however you take, you're going to recapture with the knight, and then you can follow with the d5 push. So g4, I like this move by Jan. And he's going after the white king, but d takes c6 and does hit b7. We might just see a bunch of trades. But Benjamin, as I look at this, white's pawn structure is healthier. There's double f pawns, but maybe black is in time with the counterplay against the e4 pawn. Yeah, and he takes the pawn. Queen f7 by Magnus, though, hitting the pawn on c7, which would be checkmate, and the pawn on f6. But Jan does have the time to trade. Be careful, though, because now queen d7 is a deadly, deadly threat. So let's see how he will deal with it. Rook d8 comes to mind, trying to trade off white's rook and go for a back ring checkmate of your own. But maybe there's just a series of checks after that. He instead goes for the e8 oh. square. Oh. He had rook g8, and there would not have been a good way to stop checkmate. Oh my gosh, he rushed it. It is bullet chest. They're going to make moves quickly. But Rook G8 would have given Jan a winning position. On the And right now it looks like Magnus is firmly in the driver's seat. Rook takes a 4. Everything is defended. Rook E2. I mean, I guess maybe he's trying to take on B2. But maybe now Magnus can go for an attack with Queen D8 and Rook F8 to follow. To turn this around in this manner. I mean, Jan, he missed his one chance. And suddenly it is Magnus. Oh, who could have been on the offensive. But he plays a little slowly there. Yeah, a3 defending pawn, queen e2 now by Jan. Okay, so now the queen can move rook f3. Still, he is defending every single pawn on the board. He's got these uh, passers. Queen d6 now, though. Okay, h4 by Jan. Okay, I don't think you want to trade. No, you definitely do not. It's going to be a great rook endgame for white. And still looks good for white. Watch out for queen f3 check. That's why he goes back to the 8th rank. And white is just picking up h4. Nice technique from Magnus. Yeah, he's slowly but surely maneuvering his pieces. He can actually take the pawn in case of queen d6. There's rook f4, and you now have three connected passers on the king side. G3 defends everything. You have to be careful though not to allow queen d5, so let's see how he will deal with this. It's the queen only d4. way for... Oh, queen c5 check after... Oh, queen takes c7 just leads to mate. So all of this is a oh, problem. Oh, there goes the rook. And that's another game for Magnus. Can't stop, won't stop. Magnus Carlsen wins again. And Yana Pomchi, he cannot be having a good time at this stage of the match. Yeah, right now it's a nine-point lead for Magnus. Jan going for a reversed Peerts or modern, however you want to call it. Magnus playing a, with a G6. Here, White can hope for a small edge because the 9 C6 is restricted. But yeah, Magnus playing great chess right now. When Magnus plays like this, it's both a treat to watch and a nightmare to face. So for Jan de Pomshi, the match started pretty well for him. He was up a point very early on, but then Magnus started finding his footing, and it was all downhill for there for Jan de Pomshi. So as we get to the final stretch of games, 15 minutes left in the match, now we just get to watch without the pressure of the match score because it is officially in the books. Magnus Carlsen is going to make his way to the semis. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think the thing for Jan is that Magnus' instincts are so good and that really shines through in the bullet portion. He was hanging with Magnus in the blitz. However, I think to give himself a chance, he needs to at least be even going into the bullet and perhaps even have a small lead. But the fact that he already went into the bullet portion with a four or three point deficit, it, it makes it very tough. 
I can't even give any advice. I obviously don't know what it takes to beat Magnus Carlsen. There's pretty much just one player. I should say two because Maxime Vasilegrov, who is playing right after this against Nihal Sarin, he has beaten Magnus Carlsen in the SCC format. But Hikaru and Magnus, they're the only two winners of the Speed Chess Championship. They continue to show their dominance. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So here we're sitting with knight c3 by Jan. We see trade. Now he's got the double pawns and c5 by Magnus. Magnus slowly but surely outplaying him in this endgame. Now perhaps b6, knight b7, knight d6. And uh, yeah, like like you said, how do you deal with a Magnus that's on fire? That's just playing out of his mind, playing quickly, finding every single move. The only player we can ask, like you said, is Hikaru Nakamura. And look at this rerouting. Knight b7, knight to d6 or a5, the c4 pawn is loose, and if you defend that with a knight to e3, the bishop go to h6 to remove the guard and pin that knight. The bishop on c1 has not a single inch in this position, no light of day for it. It's a miserable defense for white. Right, so maybe you have to sit with a knight on a3, but if you sit with a knight on a3, it's going to be super passive, and black can prepare a central push with f5, and Jan going down to eight seconds, I think he's, he's given up. Well, he knows that it's mathematically impossible for him uh, to win this match. Maybe he does want to steal a couple games against Magnus down the stretch. But Magnus, it feels like he doesn't care what the match score is. He wants to win each and every game. And by the way, Jan is playing pretty well to complicate matters here. Yeah, Bishop of 4. Okay, now Magnus can perhaps trade. Go king of six, or he goes king of six right away. But yeah, that's what makes these top players so good, Robert. They're super competitive. They they just want every single game. They cannot accept a single loss. And that's why, you know, we see Magnus and Ikaru year after year in these finals. And Magnus scoops up the C3 pawn, as you said. He wants to win even this game. He goes after the, now the A3 knight and the C4 pawn next. And suddenly, Black seems to have a humongous advantage. Yeah, Black now has three queenside passers, maybe just b5 or bishop d4, and now just push the pawns down the board. This has to be a win for Black Robert. For sure. Too many extra pawns. They're easy to push. White has an h-pawn, but it's on its starting square. This is no hope for White in this position. And now the a-pawn can push for Black as well. All three of them. No, oh, that's oh, a free on. knight. That's a free... Oh. <laughs> he didn't take it? <laughs> He is like, I don't want your knight, I want my three connected on the queen side. Yeah, that should okay. be good enough. Oof, this has to be knight. one for Magnus. The king goes back, and now the f-pawn's about to queen. And knight g3 wins and the And there bishop. goes the bishop, yeah. Yeah, so black all a piece. I was going to say, Benjamin, I don't even know what more there is to say. I mean, Magnus is just crushing it. Right, and now he's up 10 points. It's starting to look tough for Jan. It's starting to look tough for Jan. I think right now his only goal would be not to lose by a 10-point margin. And it's a number of bullet games, and it's very clear that Magnus Carlsen is far stronger in the quickest of time controls against Jan Napomagy. But Jan, he deserves credit because he kept this very competitive in the blitz, and then Magnus was able to run away with it down the stretch here in bullet. Exactly, yeah, Magnus playing, I would say Magnus is playing at his level or maybe even a little bit beyond it. Jan, however, we talked about this before the match, if he wants to give himself a chance, he cannot lose games unnecessarily, but he did have a few blunders here and there, and uh, yeah, as we see, then you're just going to have a tough day at the office against Magnus. Every day is probably a tough day against Magnus Carlsen, and in this position, Magnus is stealing the queen side. He took b7. A6 is going to be loose with that knight on C7. Oh, under it. There goes oh the I have his queen! Oh, 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 oh my goodness, Magnus just forgot a knight could capture his queen. And a Botas Gambit in the Speed Chess Championship. Who would have thought, Robert? <sighs> Not Magnus Carlsen, but he has a bad history of the A6 and C7 squares. Because a year ago, when he was playing Hikaru Nakamura, I said, oh, what about bishop c7? Didn't realize that the knight on a6 could capture that bishop. Magnus played the move, and Hikaru stole that piece. And this was c7 to a6. So there's something about those two squares that are difficult for Magnus with those enemy knights. Yeah, I saw someone make a tweet that Magnus, the only thing he sometimes blunders are knight moves. Like, if you look at some of his losses, he, he blunders a knight move, like a knight fork or, or something of that nature, which is quite interesting. And, and here we see yet again. And he's fortunate that all of his slips throughout the day, losing on time in a drawn position, mouse slip to lose not just one but two pawns 
earlier in the match. And then there to just hang your queen in a winning position. Uh, he's so strong that even after that, he's still up nine points. Yeah, no, he's still dominating this match. He's even better in this game. The rook in c1 is more active than the rook in b2. And this one on c4 is a little bit weak. We see bishop b5 by Jan trying to trade with that active bishop on b4. And this end game is one where black is in the driver's seat because that a2 pawn will be grabbed. The knight on a5 is in an awkward spot, but I guess there's not too much life to this because the a7 pawn, the c4 pawn, there's a likelihood that they'll be traded for each other at some moment. Exactly. Now, wait, you can take an a7 because knight takes 4 there's knight takes 4 with check. So wait, Magnus all of a sudden in trouble. c5, by the way, is a game-winning side or knight b7. So Magnus blundering a second game in a row, and he plays rook a4 to protect his rook. The knight does cover that. There's no discover check that will win material. Right, so let's see how Jan is going to try to win this one. It's still looking very unpleasant for Magnus. He's down a pawn. He's in this pin or discovery, but rook a6. Now you just go king here or here. Well, king c5, he won a knight b7 check. So there were some tricks going after the f7 pawn. And will we just see a repetition? I don't think Jan wants that. Oh, but king c8, Magnus, maybe striving for more. Right, or he thinks that this is the better move. Like, now he might not be worse anymore. Knight takes c4 is a threat, c5. Knight c4 attacking the knight. You can knight c6, but you can just trade. The knight is almost trapped, and then take an e3 or, or king c6. And then we just see full-on liquidation. It's a king and pawn endgame. This is obviously a draw. The players know it, but Magnus is just going to make a bunch of moves to burn some of the match clock. Well, there are still chances for Magnus, because after this trade, if you get the king to be three, it's winning. But can he can he, can uh, can he make Jan run out of moves on the queen side for, on the king side first? Well, no, because Ma uh, Jan played g4 to freeze black's pawns. They just repeat moves. The king's in opposition, and a draw is reached. So it's still a nine-point lead for Magnus Carlsen. He's crushing it right now. But what is this? I think this is known to be a lost variation, but nobody knows like how to actually refute this. <laughs> you take on g2, you, you, uh, white has to give up their rook, gets a strong attack in return, but you have to know what you're doing here with white. And the knight is coming to f4 and to g6, that's clearly the plan, but can't black play rook takes h7? And then run the king to you g8? You can, and, yeah. And look at Magnus. He is not liking the way he's playing because he just saw rook takes h7. Exactly, and we see here the evil bar is in the middle, so it feels like Magnus did not play in the precise way, and now it's all the way down. So actually, this has worked out brilliantly for Jan Pomniachi. He played a dubious opening, but a very provocative one. He made Magnus prove it. Magnus didn't know how to punish Black, and now, after Queen takes h7, I think Black's just winning. It should liquidate into an endgame. That's a beautiful tactic in Black's favor, and Jan Pomniachi finds it. And look at Magnus, he kind of gives that face of, yeah, good find, double exclamation point, and he resigns on the spot. So Magnus, I don't think he's... With knight to g8, Robert, what do you make of this opening? He loves doing stuff like that. Magnus has done this in Olympiads. He's done it in plenty of classical games. Uh, what's it called? The Norwegian lion or rat? or I forget what the name of the opening is where he puts his knight on h5. Like the North Sea variation. Something to that effect. Exactly, yeah. So we see bishop e7. It looks pretty all right here for black. White is the bishop pair, but the knight on c3 is slightly misplaced. In, on the other hand, black is pretty nice development. And the bishops, for the moment, aren't that effective. And I love this maneuver here by Magnus, knight of e 6 I wish I could put my knight to f6 and back to g8 on my first two moves and get a position like this. I don't know how he does it, uh, but we just saw a bad opening payoff for Jan. And now for Magnus, it's the reverse, where his bad opening, or maybe not bad, but questionable, it looks pretty good for black at the stage. Exactly. This knight is jumping around, but now it has to go back to h2. And all of it, wait, knight takes e5, that's a pawn. With knight f5 check is probably what he's looking for, and there might... Is there king f6 oh, there? No way. Oh, uh, he goes for it. He, he, he wins king of the hill. He wins king of the hill. <laughs> and yeah, the, you can end the game. <laughs> yeah, that's done. King of the hill. We got this. Uh, but the king on e5 is somehow safe enough, because queen c3 check, there's d4, and the king will scurry back to f6. And the f5 knight actually is hanging after queen c3. So what a decision from Magnus. He's getting away with it. Yeah, king of six, and now he's completely safe. Knight d4, do not take us after queen takes d4. Your king is in a deadly check, but maybe rookie eight, defend the knight, and if he gets the king to g7, it's just over, Robert. 
And if he trades on e6 and brings the king to e7, that also looks very good. So queen c3. I really like that move because you take on d4, queen takes d4 check. Your king has to go to g5. And there might be just be queen d2, queen d4, some kind of draw by repetition. Right, so let's see what Magnus is going to do. This looks like a nice little move by Jan. I don't see how this king is getting out of here. I don't either. I think I would just swap knights and d4 and try to make that draw if it is indeed a draw. Right. Oh, queen b7. Robert, knight takes e 6 d4, knight takes, rook takes e1, and then you take the knight. What a find. That is a beautiful variation that the knight on e6, it's free for white to take. Oh, we take it with the rook, but there's no way. Without e5, be it's over. There's no follow-up, and Magnus wins a brilliant game. Queen b6 there? Are you kidding me? I'm looking for a draw. He finds a way to get a victory there. Magnus Carlsen, I know it hasn't been his absolute best because of some of the mistakes he's made, but he's played a really great day of chess. That was a brilliant game. And yeah, to be fair, he should have already won after King takes e5, but the engineers finally got the win through a couple, a couple moves later. But yeah, brilliant stuff there by Magnus. And I think they're looking at the overall match clock. I'm not sure if Jan really even wants to continue at this point. But it is a match victory for Magnus Carlsen. He's going to move on to face Wesley So in the Speed Chess Champion. Want to? But there, I think, is a prize money cut that you uh, sacrifice because, well, the fans they want to see all the games played, and you know it's good just to play at the last couple of bullet games. So we see here uh, that these H pawns are up the board. This is the type of opening you really only see in the quickest of time patrols. But it's fun for the fans. Exactly. Here, knight b6 is a tricky little move by Jan. Now, knight takes c4. Wait, there it goes upon him. Bishop takes c3. Magnus does not care. He just sacks the rook, and Jan doesn't care about the rook either. Well, he wants to keep his king safe, because in bullet chess, king safety is paramount. And suddenly, Magnus, who dropped a pawn on c3, is throwing his other pawns up the board. I think both players, they really do want this match to be done. Let's be honest about it. Uh, but for Jan, taking a few more points, he won't regret that. No, for sure. Because just to remind everybody... The prize money is split also proportionally based on the score. So these last couple of games still matter a little bit for a couple hundred bucks. As we see here, Jan has a pretty fine position uh, with the rooks on the B and c putting maximum pressure on the pawn on C4. Yeah, it's a position where equal material, but the position is definitely not even. As the C4 pawn is loose, uh, the dark squares around the white king are problematic. And the light squares too. So knight G4 played, taking control of the light squares permanently, as only black has a light square bishop. Yeah, black is a nice position here. The pawn on c4 is a little bit weak. Knight e4 by Magnus. Perhaps he wants to go to g3 to put pressure on the bishop and prepare some h5 push. So let's see what Jan is going to do. Maybe like queen a4 to hit this pawn. Now, you can also defend with knight e2, but it's, of course, a little bit passive. It's passive, but it does get the job done. And at some point, white would love to double on the e-file, but black forces a trade of rooks. The e7 pawn, while it's targeted, it's hard to bring a second piece into the attack. But your h5, knight g3 idea, you need to keep an eye on that if you're Jan de Pommashi. Right, and the knight can also go to e3, putting pressure on the bishop and defending the, knight, the pawn on c4. So I love this maneuver here by Magnus. Looks, ooh, what is it? Oh, if bishop takes, there was rookie check and checkmate on h8. Magnus is going for the kill. Right, now knight f5 or knight h5 looks crushing. Oh, knight takes f5 was better because of the rook e8 stuff. Wait, check. You have to go king e7, but that looks deadly. You can't go to e8 because rook takes e6. So where is the knockout queen at? Oh, and if king e8, is there knight g7 check? Rook takes e6 is coming. But what is the threat exactly, Robert? Can, you cannot take because of rook a1. What is the move here for white? Knight g6. I don't oh, know. what a move. Now he's starting knight takes e6. Oh, oh and the bishop, bishop. rook e8. That is so sweet. Knight g7. It's so tough. Oh, rookie rookie eight. Eight. Knight e6. Rookie eight. Knight, queen g7. Oh, oh this, also, this also should do the trick. He does deliver mate, but rookie 8 knight e6 would have been a forcing mate. That would have been just too much to handle. Right, and now Jan opens up with the move 1b3. This is officially the last game of the match, the move g4. I've seen Daniel play this a couple of times. Usually it goes like h4 or like c4 and knight c3. But we, here we see Magnus taking advantage of the open h file. And Jan Apomsi, a b3 cowboy, he goes for it. And we have a trade of light square bishops. I don't think black could possibly be worse here. Healthier pawn structure. King is now, well, it had to move, but it's safe. Well, there this, goes the pawn, though. <laughs> yeah, I spoke too soon. This is bullet chess after all. 
Exactly, yeah. Jan up upon here with Magnus having pretty good piece play. The rook is pretty active. The knights are nicely positioned. and uh, But, yeah, we see Jan up upon, upon here, and he can now go e4. Yes, because after knight h4, there's rook g3 ideas. He brings his second knight into the game, and black targets the d4 pawn. Watch out, because the king on c1 is not the safest king, as that pawn would need to be back on b2 to cover up the dark squares. Right, so maybe now move like c5 if you take the queen and slide in with queen a1 check. So I think Jan should have played king b1 to make sure that none of that ever happens. He simply allows the check. The king goes into d2, and he says no more checks for you. But queen takes a2 there. Still looks like the white king would have been in danger. And this is so impressive, Robert. Magnus is down a pawn, but he offers a trade of queens. He realizes that his rooks are so active on the h-wall. There's nothing for white to do here. He cannot set his queen side majority in motion. And black is slowly but surely going to push up on the king side. And how does he do this? He's down a pawn, but he's the one trying to play for more. He's got an active king. If you ever push your queen side pawns as white... I think that the king needs to stay put on d2, otherwise the black king goes to e3, and that's a problem. So, wow, I just can't believe what I'm seeing half the time when Magnus plays endgames. Yeah, oh, and rook h7, he's sacrificing the g-pawn with one to go rook c7 and go after the pawn on c2. This is a masterclass, Robert. Just the technique, it's unbelievable. He knows when to defend a pawn or to go on the offensive, and we've already seen him win nice endgames, two rook endgames. He's just winning a pawn now. Rook c5, there's no way to defend the pawn on b5. Maybe you have to go like b6 or maybe some... Okay, go c4. He's allowing on passant though. Uh, this looks lost. You just trade everything. You're equal on the king side and you're up a pawn on the queen side. This is over. And just go after this a6 pawn. As long as you don't allow the white king to f2 and like an e3 checkmate. That would be the only thing to look out for, but it's not going to happen. Right, rookie two now, king e3, and I think e4 just wins the win the game. Rook d2. And then rook takes e2, and it's two extra pawns. Clean conversion for Magnus 